divide and rule. One day, a cow wandered away from the herd unaware toward the lioness. When she came close to the lioness, she suddenly realized that she was far from the herd. The lioness, on seeing the cow scared, reassured her. Don't be scared, I will not kill you. I just had a very good lunch, so you are safe. The cow heaved a sigh of relief. Thank you, I was lost in thought, and I didn't realize that I was so far away from the herd. What were you thinking of? This way, a conversation started between them, and as days passed by, they became good friends. Months later, the cow introduced her family to the lioness. The young lion and the bull, too, became very good friends. A young jackal, who also lived in this jungle, was waiting for a chance to eat the meat of the lion and the bull. He knew that the only way he could get to eat their meat would be if they killed each other. One day, the young jackal heard the news of the death of the lioness and the cow. He knew that the time had come for him to make his move. He went to the lion. Now that your parents are not there, the bull thinks he can get rid of you and take your place as the king. I am just warning you to be careful. You will see a change in his attitude. The lion gave a casual hearing and paid no attention. The jackal went to the bull. My friend, I just heard the lion saying that you are a coward, that you need him to protect you from other animals. This enraged the bull, but he controlled his anger and tried not to believe what the jackal said. But the jackal was successful in raising suspicion in both their minds. One day, a fight erupted between the lion and the bull. The lion roared and rushed at the bull. The bull lowered his horns and rushed at the lion. The fight lasted for hours together as they both were very strong. At the end of the lengthy fight, both the bull and the lion were dead. The jackal laughed out loud. Ha <laughs> you fools! You have no faith in your friendship. I divided you by breaking your trust in each other and used it to my advantage. Now I will feast on your flesh for weeks and weeks. <laughs> Moral. Suspicion is the cancer of friendship. In a faraway land, there ruled a great king who always helped the poor and needy. The king was a person of great charity, mm -hmm. kindness, and learning. In his kingdom lived a very poor farmer. He had a daughter who was of marriageable age, but the farmer did not have any money to get her married. Oh. Hmm. I should go to the king and ask for some money to get my daughter married. The next day, the farmer started on his journey to meet the king. I am hungry and tired. I should find some shade to sit and have the rottis that my daughter made for my journey. As the farmer was sitting to eat, there came a hungry dog begging for food. This dog needs the rottis more than I do to survive. The farmer continued his journey to see the king. After traveling some more distance, he reached the king's palace. Who are you? And what do you want from me? 
Oh, great king, I'm a poor farmer coming from a small village. Mm. I have to get my daughter married, but I have no money. That's why I've come to ask for some help. Good farmer, I will help you if you pledge the credit of some noble deed you have done. Oh, king, what noble deed can I do? I'm just a poor Brahmin. <gasps> oh. I fed a dog with Radis on my way to the palace. <gasps> I can only pledge its credit to you if it counts for anything. Let me test the nobleness of your deed. I will weigh it in the Dharma balance with gold coins. Ooh. Farmer, are you doing some magic? After heaping so many gold coins, the balance is still unmoved. Oh, King, I'm a poor farmer. What magic can I do? The King consulted his court sage about the miracle. King, the difference is in equality. You give away things which make no difference to you. But this Brahmin <gasps> gave away something which he badly needed to stay alive. He was giving away his life to the dog to help it live. <clears throat> Look at him. He is still starving. The mm -hmm. king was so pleased with the farmer that he got the <laughs> farmer's daughter married at the expense of the royal treasury. Moral, sacrifice is the soul of charity. Mm. Do good deeds and you get good results. Fortune and Wisdom The goddess of fortune and the goddess of wisdom had an argument about each other's power. I am superior to you. My worth is greater than yours. I am superior to you. Let us test it. Fortune and Wisdom decided to prove their worth with an experiment on a poor farmer in a small village. First, Fortune decided to prove her worth. She converted the entire field of wheat into a harvest of pearls. The next day, the farmer was very surprised to see the miracle in his field. I haven't seen anything like this before. At the same time, the king, who was passing by, was amazed to see a farmer grow pearls in his field. Oh, farmer. Take the entire harvest to my palace. I will give you a lot of wealth and get you married to my daughter. Your Majesty, I am blessed to accept your wish. After marrying the princess that night, when the princess was sitting next to the farmer, he suddenly remembered a story about a demon that used to sit next to people and eat them. Thinking that the princess was a demon in disguise, he ran out of the palace in fright. The king got very angry and ordered his men to bring the farmer back to his palace and ordered a death sentence to him. Look what you have done to the poor fellow. Now I will prove my worth. Wisdom entered into the farmer's brain. Suddenly, the farmer became alert. Your Majesty, for what crime am I being hanged? After being told, he realized his foolishness and cleverly thought of an excuse. Last night, I heard a drowning man cry for help from the river. I ran to save him because it said that on a wedding day, if someone dies by drowning, 
We'll never be happy in our life. Whatever I did last night was for your daughter's happiness. The king was very convinced by the explanation. Thus, wisdom proved its worth and superiority to fortune. The farmer and the princess lived happily ever after. Wisdom is fortune's security. Wisdom is more important than fortune. The Bull's Advice A farmer had a loyal bull that used to help him in farming. One day a bug flew into his backyard. You work hard every day. You help the farmer plow the fields. You help them travel from place to place pulling their carts. But what do you get to eat? Just some grass and fodder. What a pity. Dear friend, I don't have any complaints. I am very happy to serve the humans. They look after me very well. The humans are just using you for their purpose. That's why I don't work for humans. Instead, I suck their blood. But you are so big and mighty, yet you slave for humans. Look at me, how tiny I am, but I suck their blood. I work for the humans because they feed me well. They look after me every day. They give me shelter. They treat me if I fall sick. They pat me affectionately on my back and say loving words to me. They appreciate my gratefulness to them. They do all this because I serve them loyally. But this is very little for what you do for them. You work day and night for them, and all they do is just pat your back. I think I am far better than you, even though I am so tiny in size. Shame on you! You fool! Don't feel proud of yourself. The humans dislike you because you suck their blood for free. You do not help them in any way. You are a pest to humankind. I don't care. Without listening to the bull's advice, the bug flew off. One day, as usual, the bug sat on the farmer to suck his blood. What a silly pest. Bad deeds always have bad results. If she had been more helpful, she would not have lost her life. Moral. What we sow, so shall we reap. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful parrot on top of a tall tree. She had two little babies that looked exactly similar. Once, when the mother parrot went out looking for food, a hunter climbed up the parrot's nest and seized the chicks. While putting them into his bag, one of them managed to escape, and the hunter took the other home. A hermit, who was walking by, saw the parrot that managed to fly away and carried him to his ashram. Thus grew up the little chicks. One with the hunter and the other with the holy hermit. One day, a great king was riding through the forest and he happened to see the hunter's house. Suddenly, he heard someone screaming. Here is the man coming to our house, master. Catch your bow and arrow and kill him quick. Soon he realized that it was a parrot in the cage. What a nasty bird. He rode away without looking back and came across a hermitage. He stopped there for a drink of water. There, he also saw a parrot in the cage. He thought, not another rude and mean parrot. But to his great surprise, the bird began to sing. Welcome, welcome, O oh mighty king. The king was astonished to find a parrot looking similar to the one he saw at the hunter's house, but gentle and kind. He went to the cage and said, I just saw a parrot looking like you but mean and nasty. Was he living with the hunter? Asked the parrot. Yes, yes, he was, replied the king. 
With tears dripping down, the parrot said, He is my beloved brother. Once, when our mother was away, a hunter seized us. I managed to escape, but the hunter took my brother. His master is mean, and his company would have shaped his nature. But my master is different. Being in good company makes all the difference.